Know You Thought Podcast, the place where you get a heavy dose of positivity, sarcasm, knowledge, and ratchetness. Welcome to a special episode of Oh You Thought. This is episode number seven, and I'm going to be talking about nothing but sports. We all know by now, this is a big love of mine, and so... As I, as I was working on my outline for this week, I had so many topics I wanted to talk about in sports. So, yeah, I hope you enjoy the show. the gate I want to address y'all like as a female that loves sports you know I kind of joked about it on a couple of episodes about getting yourself coached up so you can impress your man or your wannabe man but how about we make this a reality for y'all like if y'all really don't like sports and let's say you just kind of stumbled on this episode because you you subscribed to the to the podcast so you saw it was a new episode and so you clicked play and now you're here So why not just take a listen so you can get some jewels, so you can start a conversation with your man or your wannabe man, your crush or whatever the case may be. So ladies, like if you have a particular question on anything related to sports in regards to football and basketball, that's where I draw the line. I don't watch baseball. It's boring as hell to me. Um, I like soccer, but I don't watch it and I'm tapped out as far as the WNBA, but for the most part, I don't know a lot of dudes that are into the WNBA, so you don't need information on that, but as far as football, basketball, and fantasy sports, that's another, like, when dudes find out that you, that you're into fantasy sports, it's a turn on, it's a conversation piece, so if you have questions like that, go ahead and email me at OUthoughtFallon, and that's F-A-L-L-O-N at gmail.com. And let's get some dialogue going. Let's get some questions going so I can just read them on my regular podcast episodes. Or if I do more special sports, I can answer your questions because I promise you, like not to stay on this like too long, but it really does work. And I'm not saying ladies like, coach yourself up so you can spend all the time with your man because I'm old school like and this is also a key I'm gonna give this away you don't need to spend every single day with your man like you need to have a life and your own friends he needs to have a life and his own friends but I'm saying like if you want to spend like an extra day or the one day you're supposed to spend with your man and it's a basketball day you can say like hey what's up like I want to watch this game too. So that's all I'm saying. Don't use this to abuse the time that you get with your man, right? So let's just go ahead and jump right on in to the episode. I have like a lot of stuff I kind of want to tap into. Um, Some of the topics are centered around my Houston Rockets. Yeah. And so, of course. I have to talk about the whole Patrick Beverly thing in Oklahoma. And yeah, it's Thursday and we're chilling at home waiting to go into the second round of the playoffs, right? And so I think it was game three in Oklahoma is where it first started. And basically, um, Patrick Beverly had an altercation. I wouldn't even call it an altercation. He had a conversation (laughs) with a fan, basically. And it stemmed from uh, during a play during the game, Patrick Beverly, he falls into the the crowd, like right behind the, the goal, right? And the guy, a few guys or whatever, we see that, they're doing something to Beverly. And at this point, we really don't know what happened at this point. We we learn later what was said due to Patrick Beverly finally speaking out. And so we're left to assume what's going on 
during this video that we see and so having a conversation with one of my guy friends and I'm just like and I brought it up first, and it's kind of crazy being a black person in America that you see this video, and the first thing that you assume happened due to the way that Patrick Beverly reacted was they must have called Beverly like nigga or something, right? And so we go with that assumption thinking, he, you know, something like that happened. And so I get on Facebook, uh the day after trying to figure out what's going on because I saw some articles and I saw the video and I couldn't see what happened. And then from reading in the comments, which sometimes it'll give you your truth, sometimes it won't. And they were saying that the guy uh, spit on Patrick Beverly, right? And so I'm mad because I'm, I'm thinking, bravo for, for Beverly for reacting the way he did and he didn't do anything basically he just went up and talked to the guys after I'm assuming it looked like maybe we we're going to go into the, the second half right and so he didn't react or anything he just he wanted to have a conversation fast forward we learned um I think during before game four or after game four he releases a statement about the fine of $25,000 for having a conversation with this man. And he just basically said that when he fell, um, the guy, the guy said, F you, Patrick Beverly, F you, Patrick Beverly over and over. Right. And so he just, he wanted to be an advocate for the players getting respect from the fans. Like, and I think like some of these fans think just because they spent their money that they have the right to do and say whatever. And it's just like, no, like these players aren't like toys in a box that you get to like poke at and just be overly aggressive towards. Like, it's just not fair. And so, yeah. And so I was like, okay, good, Beverly. You're still like, even in the aftermath being fine and everything, you're still being a good man or whatever. And he just basically said that, He's a grown ass man. And so he felt like he had that right to go have that conversation with that man. And so also allegedly the one of the guys involved in this um, is the son of the owner or whoever, the coach of the OKC's um, D-League uh, team or whatever. And so there we go. Like, okay, so they gonna make a big fuss because he's allegedly somebody, somebody, right? And it just amazes me how people will just go to the end of the world even when they're wrong. Like, Beverly did nothing to y'all, nothing. There's, there's been no reports of Beverly even like cussing these people out or anything like that. We know if you watch the Rockets that Beverly don't give a damn sometimes and and that's something like I just like about him like sometimes I wish he would just dial it back a little bit because it can be too much and so but in this in this altercation which I keep calling altercation but it's not in this situation like he handled himself like a real G he didn't do anything he was just a man about it and so I definitely feel some type of way about Beverly being fined $25,000 and it's just like where's the respect for these players and this is for anyone that's in the limelight just because as fans or whoever we are and we pay our money it doesn't give us the right to just treat these people like they aren't real and that's my two cents on that and so Rockets and OKC we recently ended that series like I knew that we would even though I was so nervous watching game four and five and I just wanted it to be over I really wanted us to sweep uh Oklahoma but that didn't happen so game five was a good game I was on pins and needles like the whole game and I'm just like we gotta take care of this right we gotta take care of this and we get into a good position where we go up like about 10 plus, but somehow we let Oklahoma back in the game. Westbrook is balling. 
the young man that's over there shooting threes for Oklahoma but can't make his free throws. He's balling. Don't know his name. And so we did it in five. It's done. It's a wrap. We waiting. And so, yeah, I just want to say salute to my Houston Rockets. I roll with y'all. Whether we win or we lose, I'm riding forever. And still on the lines of this Rockets and Oklahoma game, my boy Trevor Ariza out here doing what he does or whatever. And um, he got on IG. And I don't know. There again, if you're a Houston Rockets fan, you probably remember the shenanigans that happened when we played uh, the Dallas Mavericks a few years ago. And we put them out of the playoffs. Sidebar. I'm still waiting on my winnings from that series. I called it. I said that my Rockets were going to put the Mavs out. And I was supposed to get a custom jersey from my best friend. And I still don't have it. But that's neither here nor there. But clearly it's still there because I'm in my feelings. I want my jersey. I want to see my last name on a jersey. (laughs) But anyways, a reason he gets on Instagram and basically copies this quote or this tweet that somebody from the Houston Rockets, like media team, whoever controls the Twitter um, during the Dallas Mavs matchup, um, when we put them out of the playoffs, they put a gun and a horse and they just said, basically, be quiet. It's almost over. It is over. And basically telling them to kill themselves. And it's kind of ironic. Like, that whole tweet, like, it just started like a shit storm, right? And so the person got fired, of course, from the Houston Rockets, whoever did that, right? And then also, it changed the game as far as emojis. Um, Like, after that... We no longer had a real gun in our emojis. Now we have that green little plastic water gun type of emoji in our set instead of a real gun. So kudos to the Houston Rockets for doing that, right? So Trevor, after we beat Oklahoma, he gets on Instagram so fast. Like he just could not wait. And he does the same thing. He posts uh, a Thunderbolt bolt or whatever to represent Oklahoma right and then the same thing with a gun be quiet just go ahead and take your life basically and I'm really I'm really surprised that nothing came of this like we didn't hear anything else about that um that tweet or that Instagram post and I don't know if it's still up or not but yeah so he was extra petty for that Russell Wilson was extra petty for after they lost. He ran off the court like a little girl. And I lost respect for him because, you know, even though I don't want him to win MVP, like I understand like he has the numbers. He has the 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 play there to be an MVP. He's done a good job getting his team to the playoffs with the pieces that he has over there at Oklahoma. And we all knew after KD went over to Golden State, that Russell uh, Westbrook um, was going to go ham. And he went ham the whole season. But for him and Harden to be friends off the court, I guess they're still friends off the court. And for him just to run off the court like that and to just have that attitude, like even Robertson, like even after we laughed and teased him for missing those free throws, Back in Oklahoma, he was a G about his shit. He came over, he shook everybody's hands and went on about his way. Like sometimes you just have to just take one to the chin and just get over it and just be a good sport about it. So I was disappointed in that. So with that, like, is Russell Westbrook really the MVP of the NBA is it really just about how many triple doubles you can get I'm going back to that fact I'm sorry like because they've just that's all they focus on was all the triple doubles which is there again yes I get it he set a record bravo I'm happy for him like cool you know that's fine 
But doesn't the MVP have a better attitude than just running off the court? I understand you're in the moment, you're mad, but you still have to keep your wits about yourself and just just man up at the end of the day for a lack of a better words or phrasing and just act like an MVP. And I figure he's, he's still going to be MVP, but I still would love for Harden to get that MVP award because I feel like it just means so much. And I know it's based on the season, but if we could just circle back and just look look at how he's, he really has grown and over each season and the the pieces he had at Houston didn't always have the best pieces, but we were consistently going to the playoffs. And I just feel like for him to be overlooked again would just be a bad, bad thing to me. Another thing that happened during the Rockets and the Oklahoma game five was Russell Westbrook and Patrick Beverly exchanging words like heavy words and so that transpired into a double technical which I hate when they do that because it's just like nobody's wrong but you got a T on your record right and so our owner Les Alexander he was just like he was upset and so (laughs) before I knew it And I thank God that my link that I was using for this game (laughs) was working so I could see that live in action. I was just like, wait a minute, is that Les Alexander out his chair running towards the ref? What is he doing? And so, yeah, whatever he said to the ref, which it happened, everything that transpired took less than five seconds. And so less than five seconds has changed Less, less um, Alexander's bank account. And so he was fined $100,000 for getting out his happy seat to go run up on the ref. And this is another thing that bothers me. Like, it's just like, why? Why do they get all these fines? And why $100,000? Where is the money going? And $100,000 for running up on the ref He didn't hurt him. He didn't put his hands on him. He was just angry because the refs, they were giving us just crappy calls throughout the whole game. We weren't getting calls when we needed to get calls. And they just, it was just a lot of BS. I really felt like it was one of those games where they were trying to get, give Oklahoma the clear cut opportunity to stay in the game. So of course our series could be longer. Sometimes I believe in that stuff, even though we messed up and let Oklahoma back in the games, but back in the game, but them calls that them refs did not call or called, they help with that. And so I think like these fines, like they need to just go away. It's just a waste of money. Like, I've heard that they go to different um, benefits or, you know, to help out the community. But I think, like, if you're going to find people like that, it needs to go directly into, like, the community. Like, to help, like, $100,000, $125,000 if you add in Beverly's fine. Like, that's a lot of money that could help Houston or a neighboring city in Houston. And I just, I think, like, the fans should be able to know where the money is really going. Like, we should see, like, uh, a check and it's written out to blah, 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 blah. Not just to the NBA or whatever the case may be on this. And it's just like, I am not a fan of fines. Like, I would rather you just say, hey, they're suspended for one game because that's taking money out of their pockets. For just words. No one's getting hurt. I can understand for a fight or something like that. Okay, find them, but still 25K. How about $5,000? I know these people, for the most part, they make good money. But I just think like we're just not putting real values on just giving these fines and what money is really worth. And so. Yeah, that's a big turnoff. And then we have the the Petty King over in Chicago, Rondo. And I'm just, this whole story, it's pretty comical to me. When I saw the video, I was like, Rondo is so petty for this. But he looks like the type of dude that would do something petty like that. Probably something even worse. And so basically, he got his 25K fine. 
for trying to allegedly <laughs> trip a Jay Crowder from Boston, right? And so in the video, he's sitting on the bench because he's not playing. And so he slowly stretches out his leg when Jay Crowder is walking by. And, you know, Crowder, like, he misses the leg. He doesn't fall. No harm, no foul, right? But no, somebody in the NBA, I guess they just have somebody just watching for stuff like this. Or Crowder went and cried like a baby. I don't know how it transpired, but basically, yeah. So Rondo got the fine, and there's video of Rondo saying that, no, he didn't try to, to trip Crowder that he was just stretching his long legs and I'm just like boy bye like I love Rondo messiness and all bad attitude and all he's a talented player but Rondo you know what you were doing like it just looks so obvious in the video so yeah it was pretty funny on the the bad side when you catch them L's which I take a little bit of happiness in this because there again, right now, as I sit and talk to y'all, when I think about his name, I think about that last shot that he took against my Rockets, that series to take us out of the playoffs. And I'm talking about Damian Lillard. And so basically they got put out of the playoffs by Golden State. And Golden State is just a monster team. And now Damian Lillard is basically obsessed with trying to figure out a way to beat Golden State in the playoffs. And it's just, I don't know. Um, You can't do everything by yourself. You can have these phenomenal numbers. But Portland, they just don't have the right pieces put together to beat a team like Golden State. I don't think they could really beat anyone in the West um, in the top eight at this point. They need more pieces in order to do that. And I feel sorry for Damian Lillard. It's just kind of like a catch-22 for me because I don't like him because he, he's a shooter. And like I said, he put my Rockets out of the playoffs, but he's talented. And I also like him as a rapper. And so, so yeah, so I, I feel some type of way I, I feel like there should be more pieces there put in place for Damien and or maybe he should just go to a different team and try to boss up and get a championship like that. Because it's, it's unfortunate when you have players like this and they're good as hell, but they may never get a ring like my boy Allen Iverson never got a ring. And so I don't know what to say to Damian Lillard. Like the only way y'all can beat Golden State is if they break up Golden State and if some of the players from Golden State come to Portland. That might be the only way you can get that W in the playoffs. And so all this basketball talk is going on. We're seeing all these great games and the narrative is still the same and it's driving me crazy. People are still saying that it's going to be the Cavs and Golden State in the NBA Finals for the third time. And so I was listening to one of my favorite podcasts, uh, Jalen Jacoby, and I want to say maybe two days ago, as soon as they started the podcast, they were like, yeah, it's going to be the Cavs and Golden State again for the NBA Finals. And I just politely just turned it off and I deleted that episode. I was just like, no. The devil is a liar. Like, it's, I think it's unfair to just have the, the, the playoffs going on and you're basically negating all the hard work that people are doing to get through each round just to say that it's going to be Golden State and the Cavs. Like, the Cavs haven't even been, play, haven't even been playing their best the last couple of months. They didn't even get the top seed out of the East. And that's why I want... I want it so bad for Boston to just get through Chicago, get through the next round, get there to the Cavs and just beat their ass. Like, I just need for that to happen. And I just need for it to be a different team than what America is saying. I'm tired of that narrative. There's other good teams out there, especially in the West, that can get their ticket punched to go to the finals. And 
No, I'm not ignorant or blind. Like Golden State is a powerhouse. And you you have Kevin Durant sitting out for the past couple of games and they're still a phenomenal team because why? They're the same team <laughs> from last season that got to the playoffs. That I mean they got to the finals without KD. So when you add that pinch of KD, not too many people can mess with them, but I always say that anything is possible. They can be tired and anything is possible. Doesn't matter if their coach Steve Kerr is there because the platform is already laid. Coaching is already there. At this point, they're just playing out the plays. So that that's not a factor for me. But I just, I want it to be a fair conversation. I need these analysts to look at all these games and not just say automatically that it's going to be the Cavs in Golden State. I would even be happy with the narrative that you say Golden State and somebody else that's not the Cavs. I think that's a fair narrative. And so um, the current standings as far as the NBA playoffs, um, the Cavs, they're done. They're waiting for their next opponent. Uh, the Bulls in Boston, Boston is up 3-2. to two. Uh, Toronto, they're playing tonight. And that series is up 3-2. The Wizards and the Hawks. Um, the Wizards, they have that. It's 3-2. The Warriors, they're done and waiting. My Rockets, they're done and waiting. The Spurs and Memphis. Spurs is up 3-2. The Jazz and the Clippers. Um, Jazz, they have that. 3-2. to two. And so I just kind of want to focus on the Jazz and the Clippers because whoever wins that will be playing the Warriors. And so how are y'all feeling about a possible Jazz versus Golden State? Do you think Golden State would just automatically just run through these young guys? Or do you think that it's possible that, that the Jazz could give them a run for their money? You know, possibly make them tired, something, right? That's what I'm hoping. I'm always hoping for a team that can at least make the Warriors tired. So when we get to see them at the end again, they're a little bit tired. (laughs) And so I'm going to flip on over to some football news that I care about a little bit. Um, Adrian Peterson He's going to be a part of the New Orleans Saints. I know a lot of the Saints fans are happy about that. Who wouldn't be happy about that? Even though when he came back uh, to Minnesota, as far as uh, being injured or whatever the case may be, he started out good, but his numbers kind of deflated, right? And so I just hope going to a new team, new attitude, good pieces there, that he'll be happy. And I would love to to see the Saints do good. I mean, they're not in my conference with the Texans, and so don't have to worry about them until the end, right? (laughs) And so, yeah, I would love to see the Saints do good this upcoming season. He signed for one year for $3.5 million. Uh, $1 million million is guaranteed, and then he got a $2.5 million dollar signing bonus so good luck to Peterson and the Saints and so uh Marshawn Lynch is apparently coming back to the NFL he's coming out of retirement that was quick right and so apparently he's going to the Las Vegas Raiders and that just sounds weird to say I just don't like the vibe of the Raiders going to Las Vegas they have to build a stadium and everything right and it's just So you're wasting money out the gate. We have all these other cities in the United States that are big football cities, but you decide to move the Raiders to Las Vegas. So that's another story. I really don't care. It's not my team, but that's my two cents on that (laughs) at least. And so, yeah, he's going to allegedly be playing for the Raiders unless somehow, some way, uh, Seattle, they blocked that. Um, I didn't quite understand how they could block it when he retired from from Seattle. So if y'all understand what they mean by that, hit me up and let me know because I don't know. And so he's going to wear his original number 24. And so 
yeah, so we'll see how that goes. And then the last piece of news I want to bring to y'all is today um, starts the NFL draft. A lot of people are excited about that. If you're, if you're a Houston Texan fan, you're trying to see what possible moves do we have to make our team better. Our O-line needs to be improved and the quarterback situation needs to be improved as well. My take on the Texans, I believe we have the 25th twenty-fifth pick in the draft and what's going to be left out there? I have no clue. Um, We can definitely try to trade and do all that goodness. I'm still hoping that we have Colin Kaepernick lingering in the background somewhere and he's getting positive press again. He's been named Times uh what one of the 100 most um influential people in the world so that's a good positive thing and this is stuff we already knew about this young man and so i just hope that the texans will do the right thing and really extend a one-year deal to kaepernick because no shade to tom savage like he's out here you know, boasting, not boasting, that's the wrong word, I'm sorry. He's playing the part of being the starting quarterback. And I just, we've had some good moments with Savage, but that was just based on the flip side that we had a crappy quarterback to begin with. And so I just, I would love to have a seasoned quarterback come into to the Texans system and get us through the playoffs and get us to a Super Bowl. We've been here too long for us not to have gotten the ticket to the big dance. And so I'm not going to be watching this. I mean, it takes too long. It starts tonight and it goes through the 29th. And so I'm going to just catch (laughs) the information on Twitter or whatever. Like, I'm not going to spend all my days trying to figure out what the Texans going to do because the Texans going to be Texans and we haven't made the best decisions in the world and so I don't know but I'm very hopeful I want us to have a good season this upcoming season I still on my bucket list of things that I want to do I want to go to an official NFL game so hopefully I can get that to happen this season especially if Kaepernick is on the squad I gotta be there so yeah good luck to my Texans but yeah that's all I have like I'm pretty sure, like, once the weekend is over, I'll have more football talk and more basketball talk for next week. But if you're not already subscribing to this wonderful podcast, please take the time to subscribe on iTunes. Please take the time on iTunes to rate my podcast. And be honest, if you don't like it, fine rate me from one to five as far as the stars and then leave comments on the comment section of my podcast on iTunes, right? And, you know, tell me if you like the episodes, leave questions, whatever feedback you want to give me, please leave comments. I'm trying to reach a goal within the next six weeks to get into the the new and noteworthy section of the podcast area in iTunes. And so... I'm two weeks down, and so I just need I just need y'all to, to you know subscribe, please leave comments. Same for SoundCloud. Go ahead and subscribe and forget it. You know, like whatever platform you love to listen to this podcast on, please do that. But if you use SoundCloud, why not just go ahead and subscribe? Um, if you're an Android user, go ahead and subscribe to Google Play, leave comments and everything, like just wherever you can. And if you're not following me on social media, what are you waiting on? <laughs> Follow me on Twitter. And Twitter has really been my focus. Like I'm on Twitter like just all the time. I like being on Twitter. A lot of good information out there. A lot of happiness with happy moments and memes. So if you're not following me on Twitter, follow me. It's pretty and smart 81. And that's pretty, the the letter N, smart 81. That's my Twitter. And I just want to say thank you for everyone who has taken the time to follow me on Twitter. My numbers have really grown. Like I've 
I'm really not a social media person. Like I really just operate with my close friends and my family as far as like Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. So my numbers are really low, but Twitter is popping off for me. And I just want to say thank you. Instagram. You can follow me on Instagram. Oh, you thought Fallon, F-A-L-L-O-N. Follow me on Instagram. And then if you have questions or anything like that, that you want to just email me directly, email me at outhoughtfallon at gmail.com. If you're bored and you want to go back and listen to my old test episodes or catch up on the new episodes or look at some of my blog posts, and I promise y'all, I'll try to blog more, (laughs) but it's just hard. I'm trying to get there, so forgive me. But if you just want to just go and check out the website, do that. The website is outhoughtfallon.com, so check it out. Until next time, remember to glow up, bless up, stay prayed up, and hold it down. Hold it down. Hold it down. We gon' hold it down. We gon' hold it down.